I don't know if you can see all that smoke. Give her a big gas. I don't think that's normal. Not normal at all. So, I don't know, it always sucks. And I try not to get discouraged, but it's like, man, we just want to get back up to Canada. And what do we do? Now, even if, if somebody made a mistake on this thing at a machine shop, you know, it's great that they're going to warranty, but how do I, I've got to get it all the way back to New Mexico. Like, I'm up in Missouri now, and I'm heading for Michigan, and it's just no easy solution. I just hope it holds together long enough to at least get home and then maybe somebody there can take a look at it and figure it out. Or, I don't know. I still wonder if we're off a tooth. I don't know if that'll make it smoke or not, but um, it seems to be lacking power and still kind of chugging along. It just doesn't seem to be behaving like it should be behaving. And then, you know, burning a little bit of oil. Again, I don't know if that will be related to missing a tooth. Probably not. Uh, I wondered if that had something more to do with the fact that it's still seating. But by now it should be seated. We've put on, you know, 500 miles or so uh, since the engine rebuilt. So I would think things would be seated in there pretty good. But that was my thought. Maybe the, the rings aren't quite seated yet and you get a little bit of blow by or something, which would burn a bit of oil. We're going to go in now. We'll get uh, some oil. Um, see what else I can come up with. I really would like to dump the transmission fluid again too. But I don't know where I would do that. The engine oil can still hang on for a little longer. It's only been 500 miles. I was told to do that about a thousand miles. So we'll give it another 400 miles or something. Then we'll dump it all out, put a new filter on, new uh, new fluids, and go from there. We just changed the oil and uh, sitting here idling. Check the transmission oil at the same time here, so that's why it's idling. Okay, so good morning. This morning we're, uh, we're just about to get going again. I fired it up, no smoke this morning. It seems to be the case when it's cold, it doesn't smoke. When it's hot, it does. More and more, everything I'm reading is still leaning towards the timing chain being off one tooth, which uh, the guy who put it together says can't be, but I don't know what else to check. We've literally checked just for everything else. I've talked to uh, a couple of mechanics here. Of course, nobody's got time to look at it right now, and it's not really something I want to tackle in a Walmart parking lot. Um, one older guy said, well, you're you should be throwing a code, camshaft, and crankshaft correlation code, uh, which I am. I just looked it up, and I am throwing that code if if I'm off a tooth because they need to communicate together. So the timing chain connects the camshaft and the crankshaft together, and then they have to spin in the right order so that things open in the right time. If, uh, from what I'm reading online, if it's off, then your valves will still be either opening or closing, however that works, when they shouldn't be, and therefore it could be smoking which it is. Uh, it sounds like this is a non-interference engine, so there's not, it's not as big of a deal if they're off because it won't hit the heads, but uh, one tooth off you could still drive with, more tooths off would definitely be bad. Uh, what else is it doing? I'm told to check the compression. If I am off, if I'm correct on the one tooth off, the compression should be horrendous. And so we're gonna go check that out now. AutoZone lets you use tools for nothing, for free. So I'm gonna go over there and check the compression. Um, I was part of a Bible study group. Yeah, I guess it's kind of Bible study group. Anyways, across the states and a bunch of guys in Canada uh, for quite a while. I haven't been on it now in a while anyway, but it was just uh, on, on WhatsApp, on a group or signal, forget which one. Anyway, in this area, a bunch of the guys live right here in Missouri. So one of them stopped by here. We had a nice chat this morning. Uh, another one is planning on coming now, but we're, we're not gonna be at Walmart anymore. I just told them we're going to AutoZone, so. Um, hopefully we'll meet up with him yet. So it's kind of neat, you meet people. And then somebody else, uh, one of our viewers from, oh, I forget where, anyway, we're supposed to meet them about an hour from here, uh, whenever we get out that way, basically. So uh, that'll be kind of neat too. So it's nice to, to meet people still and just get encouragement that way as well. Hopefully we can get this thing solved. Uh, through the guy that came here from that Bible study group, he is his mechanic, uh, he gave me the number and I got a hold of them. And they, if I bring it there today, they can take a look at it. Uh, they can't guarantee what they, they can fix it today, depending on what it needs, but at least they can take a look at it and give us an idea. Sounds like that shop might have a couple loaner cars, because I explained that we have a lot of kids in here, 
band now. We have to sleep somewhere, obviously. So if it means a couple of nights in a hotel, hopefully there's one with a pool or something interesting. And, um, you know, they can they can do this. I can do most of the work myself, but a lot of shops don't really want that done. Um, two reasons. One, they have no idea who I am. So if I start stripping things apart in their parking lot and making a mess, it could just get worse. Um, and secondly, you know, there's, there's liability hazards and all that other stuff. So... We're going to go over there, but they got lunch here shortly, so we're going to go to AutoZone first, do a compression test myself, and then we'll scoot over there and I'll give them the information. I have uh, my cousin who's a mechanic on uh, that I'm chatting with. I have uh, one of our viewers actually from Ontario. Her husband's a good mechanic, so I'm talking to him on this. So I guess he'll probably be, both of you guys probably be watching this later. Thank you very much for your help. I got the guy to put the engine together uh, back in New Mexico. So it's three mechanics. So anyway, through everything, and then online, of course, there's a wealth of information. We're kind of putting a picture together of what might have happened or what might be going on. I'm really hoping we can come out with something. It would be nice to have just a, a nice holiday from here on without all these troubles. So I don't know if you can see the steering wheel here is shaking. It never used to do any of this. And uh, so when you're driving, you can just feel it. You can feel it's underpowered and feel things aren't running right. I'm really hoping we can get down to the bottom of it. So we're driving down the road again, uh, and never ended up getting the compression test done. Uh, one of the guys I've known here on my uh, on the Bible study group that I was talking about uh, met us at AutoZone just as I was about to do the compression test, so we had a nice long chat, really appreciated the visit. So in any case, uh, I was going to do the compression test while I waited for the mechanic shop there on lunch, and uh, now they're long off of lunch. So I brought the compression tester back to AutoZone. I'm scooting down the road here to the shop. We said they can look at it right away. Um, hopefully they can, I'm gonna tell them I want a compression test done and that I believe it's off a tooth. So we're gonna see, maybe I'm wrong, maybe it's something else. Uh, I think being off a tooth is probably one of the better scenarios though. Otherwise I believe maybe something inside's not right. So we're gonna see. We're scooting down the highway here now. And uh, we have a place to stay too. Both both brothers that I talked to this morning uh, offered us a place to stay with their motor home uh, with, uh, with power hookup and water and we'd figure something out for the sewer. Uh, mechanic shop also said we could stick around there. Look at this nice area here. All this farm. Oh, well, this here is a little dry looking, but anyway, there's a lot of nice trees and stuff here. It's beautiful. Uh, mechanic shop also said we would be able to stay there obviously not in their shop but otherwise we could stay there and then we could uh, uh, they would have some loaner cars that we could probably use to get around if need be. so there's a few options there at least and we'll see see how the day progresses yeah this place is well organized man nice new facility or newer anyway lots of bays but uh Inside, I was just amazed at the organization. It just seemed to know their stuff and get right on things. You got a big board of all the jobs they need to do, and hey, this one we don't have parts for. Let's get on to that one. Lots of technicians. They just seem to know their their stuff. So let's hope they can figure this out. It's dry fork diesel. Anyway, it came recommended, and uh, they're gonna get at it right away. Sounds like so we're just getting everything out of the motorhome. <laughs> Whoa, zoom right in. Get a couple of kids in here. Maddie's not super thrilled. So I don't know how long we're going to be out. We can't be in it while they pull it into the shop. While it's in the shop, we can't be in it. So I'm assuming this is just diagnostics and it won't be real long. And then, um, uh, yeah, we do have offers of two vans that we can get. I don't know how far away they are. At least half an hour, probably. At least that would get us mobile and all in the same vehicle. And I believe they have a loaner vehicle here that we would be able to use temporarily. So we can probably use it to go get the van. But these are all just probably. For now, we're just going to hang out here in the shade somewhere and um, try to get a, a plan together of what is wrong here. I told him the stuff that's happening and what I'm seeing, and he thinks I'm, I'm hitting the nail on the head here with the uh, timing chain. But he said, you know, it, it's... It's unlikely because it's it's it shouldn't happen, I guess, basically. But anyway, we'll see. All right, initial assessment. He's looked at on the scanner and stuff, and he sees that one side is running really rich and the other side is running lean. He's not sure why that's happening, but that could cause a shake as well, and obviously power loss. And at that point, as far as the scanner is concerned, he's not seeing anything related to timing chain. Uh, we have not done a compression test yet. He's looking into the fuel thing right now, and. Uh, yeah, keep you informed when I hear more. Say yummy, honey. 
Hey. Is it yummy? Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's kind of confusing coming in here at first, but... Um, it's very yummy. I like it. Penny. Is it yummy? Okay. What do you think? Is it yummy? Mm-hmm. Good. Good morning, everybody, from beautiful Missouri. So, update. We uh, didn't figure out much yesterday. The mechanic shop looked at it for about four hours, I think, and um, didn't charge us for that long. They have a diagnosing fee of $115, so I was happy to see that they weren't going to charge us for everything. They haven't figured out a lot yet. Uh, it's going back in there today. They let us take it, obviously. That's where we got it. To, uh, to sleep in for the night and uh, and then we're gonna be bringing it back there again today now cool story um, when we first started our YouTube channel so I think this sometimes is how God works too it takes years before we understand things maybe but uh, we first started our YouTube channel and we left Western Canada uh, another family moved in not even close to where we were but uh, a different area of the same province of Saskatchewan and contacted us when we were already in Ontario by that time before we got the email. Through him, uh, the reason they contacted us because we had a lot of similarities, so I think it was his sister or something, I, I might have the story quite slightly wrong, was watching our channel and then uh, said, hey, this family's kind of like you guys and they live in Saskatchewan. So we had already left Saskatchewan at that point, but uh, we've made a lot of contact. He's come over to visit us in Ontario once with uh, three of his children. And, uh, yeah, we just corresponded a lot back and forth. Now, through him, I got involved with a Bible study men's group uh, through the Signal app. I think it was Signal or Telegram. Not well, Signal, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, it doesn't matter. One of those apps. And met a bunch of brethren here from Missouri. And now that we're in Missouri here, uh, we happen to be close by to some of them. And so one of them, Teo, I've talked to quite a bit on the side. Uh... I just mentioned to him, like, hey, whereabouts are you guys? So they happened to be very, very close to where we were, and he had a doctor's appointment, eye doctor's appointment yesterday in Joblin, where we were. So anyway, small world. Um, they, through their church, another brother from that group as well, and from that church, came out to visit us there at the Walmart parking lot yesterday morning, Norman. And um, through their group, they put out a request to see if anybody had a spare van we could drive. Teo has one. Uh, he says it's a bit rougher, but we would be willing to... Or, more than able to use it so that would have been a cool blessing big van too because that's the problem we don't all fit in one vehicle uh, we had that Volvo to drive there in New Mexico but we don't all fit right so look at that beautiful sunset or sunrise anyways long story short we uh, we were also allowed to park here both at Teo's place and at Norman's place they had a spot we could park our RV so here we're parked and we've got water hookup and um, power hookup there's no sewer here so but through that group, there was another gentleman, Max. I've only talked to him maybe a couple of times uh, on this group. Other than that, I don't really know these people that well. It's just just uh, in conversation on a social media app. Uh, this very nice looking Ford Transit that we're allowed to use um, for a few days and drive around Missouri here a bit. So once again, I just the provision of God and how that all worked. I was thinking that last night and I was laying in bed. I'm like, you know, I met Tyler like. It's got to be, well, he'd know better, but must be over three years ago now, I think. And uh, and that all led to today, where we get to use a Ford Transit van while our motorhome is once again going in the shop, getting looked at. So, very nice van. And um, just very humbled by it all. So, Teo's channel, I was going to do a little shout out to him. It's Teo Lee. Maybe Anissa can put a link on here because I know the first time I looked for it, I had a hard time finding it. It's a smaller channel. He sings on there a bit. And um, yeah, if you can go to his channel and hit subscribe uh, and watch a bunch of his stuff there, I think you'll like it for one. It's beautiful music. Uh, and for another, it might help his channel grow as well. Their church, their church is here locally in Missouri. Uh, I think they do good things here in the community, try to grow, uh, grow the church. Uh, and try to reach the people here in the area. So maybe if I find a link for that, I can throw it on there too. I believe there's some, uh, I think it's a YouTube channel as well, where you can watch some of their services or something if you're interested in doing that. So we'll throw all three links down below here for you to check out. And um, yeah, maybe even just say say some kind words to them. Um, 
you know, God's family is, is so much bigger than a denomination. It's so much bigger than just one area or one race or one people or one language. I think people get caught up in that so easily. Uh, we are all children of God, and maybe we all uh, operate a little bit differently. But um, at the end of the day, we're one big family. All those who proclaim Christ as their Savior are part of that family. And, and um, outside of that, even though I think humanity is one big family, and we need to work together. This world is equally difficult and, and interesting for all of us. And we need to help one another with that. So uh, bless them with that. If you could, that'd be great. So once again, we're being looked after, though, and we had some good fellowship. Today we're going to do some driving around. I have no idea what we're going to do. We're going to drop this motorhome back off again. They're going to keep looking. Uh, it seems kind of like the timing chain is off a notch, and yet um, maybe not. There's some symptoms that don't quite match up with that, so they haven't really ruled anything out at this point. Uh, he's going to try playing with the distributor today to see if that can make a difference. But let's just hope he can get down to some. It's really smoking a lot now. Yesterday was smoking even more again and just, just not running good at all. So um, I'm hoping, you know, we just threw thousands and thousands of dollars into the engine that, um, you know, could have been better used somewhere else. I'm really hoping we're not going to be spending a lot more. There comes an end at some point to how much we can spend on this thing. So let's hope for the best and uh, we'll keep you in the loop when we know more. I would be up waiting for you if you had to leave I would wait a lifetime if you were at sea I just wanna say that I feel That our love is real Maybe we should hurry up and seal the deal is it looks like beans and yet it does not look like beans so I don't know maybe they grow a different kind of bean here I am not sure doing road work ahead here by looks of it we're just uh, odd we really love this kind of landscape mm, yeah. oh, I always thought Missouri was a contender Missouri was a contender just based on the conservative Christian principles that uh, I hear here it's kind of a Bible Belt area but I never really I didn't envision it looked like this. Like, I'm just amazed at how fast the landscape changed from, um, you know, from deserty on the one side of Oklahoma to all of a sudden this kind of. And now we're what are we like? Maybe an hour into uh, into Missouri, not that far yet across the state line, but uh, very nice. Just dropped the motorhome off at the mechanic shop. They're going to take a look at it. He's going to check the rest of the cylinders. He only checked one yesterday for compression. The thinking there is that if the timing chain is off. Uh, which is what it feels like, then the compression should be out. Now he says that's not guaranteed though, but I mean if the compression is out then that would be a good indication. But just because the compression's not out still doesn't mean it's not the timing chain. The only real way to check is to take the timing plate off. And that's a lot of work. Uh, just estimating myself and talking to Anissa yesterday, I figured it would probably be a good two and a half hours or more to pull it off. Just the rads and stuff out and then the rest. So yeah, I think you'd be a full day for sure getting that all done. So. Maybe I'm wrong, but it's not exactly the easiest job uh, in front of that motor. Um, so yeah, he's going to test the rest of those. If they test out, then you know it doesn't necessarily rule it out, but it could be. He's going to play with the distributor today. He could not get it to communicate properly, so he's wondering if maybe something's out there, and he's going to be checking with that. Uh, we have also suggested maybe computer issues or something, if there's no communication. So really, we don't know. We're going to keep playing with it. We're going to kind of try to forget about the motorhome today and uh, tomorrow we got this van here for a little while. We're going to cruise around and see what we can find as far as the sites in the area. Uh, there's some caves around, there's some water around. Uh, yeah, a few things just to check out and see. And uh, there's also some of the YouTube channels that we've watched down here. So, you know, we've learned a little bit about certain areas that we wouldn't mind checking out as well. I know it's nothing new, but it's so good to see you.
do this every day And I'm still so amazed by you So hold me tight through the night Tree varieties, everything is uh, still a nice green color, it's not all dead and dying. Maddie's not so sure she likes it. And he, even these roads, although they're uh, you know very snaky and treacherous in some ways, it adds a bit of a, a scenic twist to it, winding back and forth. So we are currently headed towards Alba, Ava, Ava. I gotta remember how to say that, Missouri. Uh, check that town out today and, and just the area, I guess. So I think we're what, half an hour from there, maybe? 20 minutes. Beautiful scenic route. You know why that motorhome has duels and we have not? Or uh, tandem axle. Stamps on? Yes, but I need my mail. Papa. So you just went through a drive through mailbox? Drive through mailbox, yeah. I should at least hand you a donut and a coffee. That's gonna need. Hey, so this place is really neat. True Brew. Apparently they own the uh, same owners of the. Oh, I forget. It was a movie theater and there was something else, some other business. Nice place. Right here in Ava, Missouri. And basically the way it works, if you can't afford your food, you don't need to pay for it. That sounds kind of strange, but um, it's a not-for-profit business, all run by volunteers. And you can, uh, obviously those who can pay can leave a little extra for others that can't pay. Uh, very cheap too, I mean the ice cream is only 50 cents a bucket. We've got ice cream for the entire family for $4. I'm like, well we have to give you a bit more than that, that's pretty cheap ice cream. Uh, but they have downstairs too. I didn't actually look down there, but it sounds like they have uh, clothing. 
as well as food for anybody that needs it. There is a lot of, uh, I guess, poor people, for lack of a better word, uh, in this area that need extra help. And so that's what they're doing here to try to ease that. That is part of their ministry, ease that burden uh, for those people. So very good. If you happen to be in this area, check that out. Very, very friendly people in there, uh, very Christian. And uh, just, yeah, we enjoyed our little visit. We got the turkey. Look at right there, right there, right there. That was a whole whack of turkeys. Look at them all. They are. The young ones. Yeah, a bunch of little ones. Very cool. Okay, mechanic shop called. Um, <clears throat> two things. First of all, they called. They said cylinder number seven is doing something weird. They checked the compression. All the other ones, they said, everything seems pretty good. But number seven, he got 40 pounds at one point, which is extremely low if you know anything. The other cylinders, well, the only other one that I know of, I know number one when they tested, it was 135. And it should be between 130 and 140, so that's bang on. Number seven was reading 40, then he tested it again, and it was 10, and he tested it again, it was like 15, and it's just kind of all over the place. And like, something's not right. So they opened up the valve cover. That covers uh, the valves, obviously. On the one side, they opened it up, and they can see in there, there's a rocker arm. The rocker arm sits on top of a, uh, of a push rod. The rocker arm is sitting sideways in completely the wrong direction. The push rod is just bouncing around in there. It's chewed up pretty bad. The push rod goes down in, sits on a lifter, or sits on, yeah, there's a push, uh, well, what do you call it now? There's a push rod, it sits on a plunger. So I think the plunger's part of the lifter. I don't really know. I'm going to Google that as soon as I'm done talking here. But the lifters sit on top of the camshaft. So as the camshaft turns around, it's got lobes that stick out a bit so that it makes the lifter move up and down as it turns because it's not perfectly round. It's kind of like oval shaped. So as it spins around, it's going to lift the lifter up and down, which moves the push rods up and down, which then opens up the valves. And that's what's going goofy on that thing. The it looks like he says they actually use their own push rods. The one he measured seems like it's a quarter inch short from what he can tell the engine calls for. I'll find out more. He's looking into it right now. You know, it's possible that maybe he looked up the wrong engine and they're supposed to be that length, or it's possible that the wrong push rods were put into this engine. I don't know at this point. I'm just telling you what he's told me. And the lifter has basically exploded in there. So they're putting together a quote and also a timeline on what it's going to take to put this all back together. I would personally think this should be all covered under warranty. Um, they're gonna figure it out. They're gonna put it all together for me and we'll go we'll from there. But that's the update that I have right now. The timing and everything like that looks good. I think it sounds like most of this can be fixed from um, the front or from the top there. So I don't think they have to open it all up again. The other day when I had it open, I filmed the spring down inside and I couldn't figure out where the spring come from. And, and uh, I asked the guy to build the engine what's with the spring nobody can figure out where the spring came from well it sounds like the spring that's missing in the lifter is about a half inch wide and about an inch and a quarter long I and mean, that's that spring that i would have found inside there so what happened i don't know but it wasn't something wasn't put together right or some parts were not sufficient I'm not sure we'll find out more and i'll let you know so a little farther we're getting closer to oh well, we're still quite a ways how far are we Well, we're about two hours, uh, let me think this through, south, south west of Farmington. The Nisa thinks it's close to Mark Twain Provincial Park. Anyway, it's a lot drier looking here and not, not near, I mean, it's still appealing, but not as appealing. It looks a lot drier. Uh, you see quite a few spots where there's like yeah. sandy or dirt kind of sticking out a little bit. It's a nice area, but it visibly looks drier our opinion than, uh, than where we were uh, closer to Joblin. So at this point Joblin would, would be you know more appealing to us for sure. You can see the hill coming up there on the left. I understand that that is obviously part of road and they may have scraped some dirt off of that but you can see dirt sticking there or uh, sand sticking there. trees kind of look really dry more fall fall ready you can see all the browns in the ditches here right by the so but of course that can also be an isolated thing from year to year it makes a big difference where the rain falls down right so it looks 
these fields do not look as productive. They look just kind of overrun with milkweed. Just doesn't look as fertile or sandy. Yep. Kate has heard back from the shop again on the motor. So it appears that one push rod is too short when it was installed. All the other push rods appear to be the right length. One of them is too short. And it again appears like it belongs to a small block, is what they're telling me, and not this big block. How did that happen? Uh, I have no idea. It's a very good question, and I'm not sure. I believe, if I remember correctly, they came in a box, and you know, you take them in the box and put them in the engine. But it, um, Finley's crying back there. He's not liking the hills. Going up and down, up and down. It's bothering his belly. Anyway, I don't know what to do now. I mean, to to pull the air intakes off, uh, we have to replace this lifter and replace these this rod. We're looking at another bill of two thousand six hundred American. Uh, American dollars to get this done. And um, I mean, we just dumped in almost seven thousand dollars. So we really feel trapped here now on what to do. And like whose fault is it? How do you, I don't know. All right, more frustrations. <laughs> I ordered some specialty plug uh, plug wires for the motor home. They have ceramic tips on the end, supposed to handle the high heat. Deliberately ordered them days in advance uh, here in Farmington, Missouri. And I was going to go pick them up. They're supposed to be here this morning. It's going to be a four-day delivery. That's why we ordered them way up here. And I ordered them like three days ago, back on the 26th. So I get here now to pick them up. They can't find them. They got no record or nothing. They're looking and looking and looking. Finally, they found it. Found the order and that it was canceled today. I don't know why today, but it was canceled because customer did not pay. Yeah, anything over $75 needs to be paid for. Otherwise, the vendor will cancel the order. So when I ordered it, I asked if I had to pay now. He says, no, no, just pay when, you, when it gets here. Uh, and that way if it's the wrong thing or whatever. So now I have no plug wires and it's gonna be another four days ordering them. It is four and a half hours drive here. Yeah, we just drove here uh, about four hours away from where we were to go pick these up, thinking they're here. Nobody phoned us to tell us that it was canceled. Well, maybe they didn't know, I have no idea. It's kind of frustrating. Another one of those things, it is what it is. But, <laughs> all right, some of you might notice that we have some videos on our, what is it called, our Facebook uh, group sometimes, and it's from these, oh, which way to go? These people! <laughs> yeah, we thought we would come in, and uh, they're too busy talking. We thought we would come in uh, to uh, check out where they live. I can turn it for me that way. <laughs> All right, so it's 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 Chris and Tara at Simple Life, right? A Simple Life with Chris and Tara. There you go. So go and check out their their channel and Cora. And there's Cora. <laughs> <laughs> That's ours. That's ours. And thanks for having us. Yeah, we're so glad we got to meet you guys. I know it's so fun. It's so fun that we have this community that we have built. Yeah, we love your family. So uh, all your videos. We love yours. So you travel too. through the United States. No thanks. <laughs> See you two just chilling here on the couch. That's what I do. Just wait until you're done. So here we are. We're at the hotel room tonight, and uh, of course, there's too many people, so we had to split up. So the girls are in one room, and the boys are in the other. <laughs> and it turns out we have the boys' suitcase. <laughs> so they're wondering what the boys are gonna do in their room with with girls', girls stuff. <laughs> girls stuff. So I think I should probably return it to them. <laughs> What I thought was gone Was sitting in my pocket In plain sight